What's up, Spikes? Welcome back. Today, we bring to you the third episode of the Goliath Gauntlet. Uh, this is once again the Azalea Gauntlet. Uh, so as a short refresher, I am playing Azalea. I'm the one that's going through the gauntlet. Uh, Jay, my good friend and a local player here in the Winnipeg scene, is joining me uh, as the guest for these. Uh, and if you don't know the previous matches, you should look at both of them. You should go watch them uh, because they were both fantastic. Uh, the last one was also fantastic. And that's all else. You, you, should, you should watch it. It was a good time. Um, but uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be playing Azalea once again. Uh, I have the same loadout that I've had previously, uh, but I will still go over it just in case you haven't seen the other one. Uh, I'm going to be running Death Dealer as uh, my bow. This is a pretty go wide deck, uh, and a lot of the cards that allow you to go wide in Azalea are usually relatively low cost. Uh, and low cost and low pitch, I, sh I should say. So having Death Dealer to either convert a Tunic resource into another card in hand, kind of, um, that you can you know, free reload something and have another thing to pitch is very valuable in this deck. So hopefully I'll be able to keep cards in my hand to do that against uh, the deck that Jay is playing, some foreshadowing. Uh, I also have Crow's Nest, which did come up in the last game. I was able to put an aim counter on something. So we'll see if that's something else that can happen. Again, just kind of a free slot. Um, with Rangers having access to Quivers now. Uh, I'm also playing Skullborn Crosswrap, sort of a way to uh, look at the top card of my deck to see if I can uh, use uh, the top of my deck to make a dominated arrow, because dominate and arrows uh, go really nicely together. Both great things. Yeah, especially when it's specifically read in the ledger <laughs> four times. Um, uh, Fiendal Spring Tunic as well. Uh, once again, just kind of a baseline good piece of equipment especially for Ranger who doesn't quite, well, they do have a Ranger equipment now uh, for chess piece, but it's maybe more relevant in Riptide, not so much in Azalea. So Spring Tunic is where we're gonna stay. Uh, Bullseye Bracers as well. Uh, once again, just having access to a plus one and an arsenal uh, whenever you need it can be really useful, especially with a deck, like I said, that doesn't have as much pitch as some other decks. Uh, and Snapdragon Scalers, just to, if I can hit you twice, then I will. Uh, and I'll have access to the, that possibility. Um, but with all of that being said, Jay, who have you brought to the table today? Well, I have brought Reinar. Hey, everybody. Once again, Jay, uh, <laughs> at Zen State Fab on YouTube, if you want to check that out. You I've should. brought Reinar to the table uh, for this episode. Um, beside Reinar, I have uh, some lovely little slashy mandible claws. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and do some slashing here. Um, specifically with Reinar, whenever I discard a six or greater uh, power card uh, attack, usually are the things that have those that power, uh, I will intimidate you and you will feel intimidated. I am very intimidated already. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. Um, Crown of Providence, kind of a mainstay. I've uh, had this on my head for the three games now. Amazing piece, uh, especially with decks that are have the potential to whiff. Mm -hmm. You can kind of fix your hand or uh, bottom an arsenal card to gain a five card hand. Some new stuff on the bottom here, Scabston Leathers, because it's fun. Uh, this can give me more actions, so I can go wide if I am good with the dice. <laughs> if I roll a one, I, it makes me sad. Yeah, makes everybody sad. <laughs> <laughs> makes everybody sad. So we won't do that, but I do have some uh, of something to fall back on here. So mm -hmm. Gambler's Gloves, if things go awry, I can break Gambler's Gloves to roll again. Uh, Barkbone Strapping for some more rolling action. Uh, instead of Tunic, I don't need to remember my Tunic uh, counter, which is great. Uh, I can roll a dice and I gain resources equal to half of the number I rolled. Exceptional. Uh, yes, with that being said, once again, you did win the die roll and you chose to go first, which I think is not a surprise considering yes. uh, it is a Reinhardt deck. So I feel mm -hmm. like I'm going to have to prepare myself for a big punch of some variety. Yes. Uh, but yes, good luck and have fun. You as well. I will begin my turn by apologizing to you in mm. advance mm -hmm. uh, and then playing a Blood Rush Bellow. Okay. Pitching a blue card with two floating. I, uh, just, a, just to butt in, I do not accept your apology uh, and I am very personally offended. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's a fair reaction to have. Um, as an additional cost to play Blood Rush Bellow, I must discard a random card, so I will have you choose. This one. That one is a six or greater power. Dang. Therefore, uh, my lovely altered Reinar will trigger, and I will intimidate you. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll re-roll, and we'll probably re-roll a thousand oh. times. Um, this one, please. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, 
My brute attack actions gain plus two, so I will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if the discarded card is six or greater power, I will draw two cards. One, two. And that has go again. So instead of just ending your turn, uh, which is pretty awkward with Blood Rush below, <laughs> I've seen it happen exactly one time. Yeah. Uh, where they just had to Hail Mary it and they whiffed. <laughs> yeah. That's not what happened here. Yeah. Okay, from there, I'm going to claw you for five. Oh, I have access to cards in my hand. Yes, you do. I'll block for five uh, with this Release the Tension and this Sleep Dart. Okay. I will follow that up with a Pulping. Discarding a blue, I will have a blue Reckless Swing. I will have one float. Uh, from Pulping, I draw a card and I discard a random card. If I discard a six or greater, it gains Dominate. Okay. And if you defend with less than two non-equipment cards, it has going. Hmm. So there are lots of text on this. Mm -hmm. I will once again allow you to choose the card I This discard. one. It is a pack hunt, um, which is a six or greater power. Reinar will once again trigger. Oh, you only have one left. I only have one okay. card in my hand, yeah. So I will intimidate that. Okay. okay. And then this will come in for uh, eight with dominate. I will take eight damage. Okay. From there, I'm going to roll Barkbone Strapping. Oh, We like to roll some dice. Okay. So I'm going to roll some dice. I'm going to gain resources equal to half of the number rolled, and it's not going to be a one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I, I've done enough. I, I've done enough. Yeah. Um, so this breaks. I do not gain a resource. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I will still... Make you somewhat sad. See, mm. I could have come in with a pulping, which would be scary. Ah, yeah. uh, I'm just going to pitch it and claw you for five. I will be taking that five. Okay. I Going down to choice. seven on turn one is okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good trade, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass the turn. Okay. I would like to take up my tunic to one. Mm -hmm. And I would like to arsenal this card. Pass to you. <laughs> Excellent. There's, Excellent choice. There is not much else that I was able that's to fair. do with my hand. <laughs> Uh, on my turn, I'm going to play a Barraging Beatdown. My next Brute Attack this turn will gain uh, plus four attack unless you block with two non-equipment cards. Uh, it has Intimidate. Intimidate. This one. Okay. I will follow that up with uh, Swing Big. This will be coming in for 12 or 8. Hmm. Both numbers are larger than you like. To. Correct. Uh, I would like to block with two cards from my hand. Yes. Uh, this Knock the Death Whistle and this Lace with Blood Rot. Okay. So it will go back down to eight and you will be taking three. And I will take three. Okay. I will move to Arsenal. I'm going to take my tunic up to two. Then this will seem like I did a foolish thing, but once uh, people see what's in my hand, they might understand. I'm going to activate my Skullbone Crosswrap and reveal this Fate for Scene okay. for my Arsenal. And I would like to opt one. Put that on top. Azalea. Infecting shot. Ooh. We saw an arrow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we saw an arrow. So because I put this infecting shot face up into my arsenal from my deck, I will actually trigger my crow's nest. And I'm gonna pitch this rain razors in order to do so. I'll have one resource floating and this will get an aim counter. Excellent. Then uh, I would also like to play this release the tension. Uh, to give it plus three, and you can't play defense reactions from Arsenal, this chain link. Then uh, this will be coming in for nine with Dominate. Uh, and if it hits you, you will get a Blood Rot Pox. I think it's going to hit me. Okay. Nine Dominate. Nine Dominate. And no defense reactions if that's a defense reaction, mm -hmm. specifically. <laughs> okay. I will be blocking with this Commanding Conquer, this Crown of Providence, and this Scabskin Leathers for a total of seven. Okay. And I will be uh, sinking my arsenal with the crown. Okay. Uh, so it will deal two damage to you. Yes. And I give you this shiny nice little thing. Thank you so much. You are exceedingly welcome. And I will pass the turn over to you. And hopefully you drew only uh, barraging beatdowns and nothing else. <laughs> Thank you for the well wishes. Uh, <laughs> I understand it. I, I understand. I will play a barraging beatdown. I didn't mean it. <laughs> it's just sort of a nice thing that you say to people. So this is, again, a red one, so plus four or nothing if you block with two from hand. Uh, Reroll. No. <laughs> this one. Okay. 
I will follow that up with a Savage Feast, pitching a yellow beast within. I'll have one float. As an additional cost to play it, I will discard this Massacre, which is a good card to discard to it. Uh -huh. So when uh, Massacre is discarded to, play it, to pay the cost of a Brute Attack Action card, I get to Intimidate. Mm -hmm. uh, so Reinar will also trigger, mm -hmm. and I will Intimidate two cards from your hand. So mm -hmm. Two, four, six. Uh, this one. And one, two, three, this one. Um, this is coming in for 10. Okay. But if I block with two cards, it's only for six, right? Correct. Okay. Well, I'll block with the one card that's left in my hand, which blocks for two. Okay. Uh, and I'll also block with my Bullseye Bracers for zero mm -hmm. uh, and my Snapdragon Scalers for zero. Yeah, I see what you're doing. That's a good call. That's and good call. Uh, I'll just I'll toss in the Skullbone Crosswrap sure. as well. Yep. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the Tunic around, though, because it's going to give me a reason next to yeah. So, <laughs> um, yes, I am extremely, extremely dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reinar can be mean on turn one. Yeah. Or he can do nothing. The the most unfortunate part was I blocked with the sleep dart, and that was the only arrow that was within the top eight cards of my deck. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a problem. Yeah, and then I had the knock the death whistle mm -hmm. as one of the two cards that I could block with on that turn. That would have given me an arrow, but because I had arsenaled the fate for scene, even if I knock the death whistle, all it does is put one on the top, which like maybe I should have done, but uh, yeah. It was just an unfortunate draw against an extremely fortunate draw. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Really, yeah, the two red barragings. It doesn't really get much better. And I feel like, in hindsight, I feel like Reinar is particularly punishing into Azalea because Azalea wants to block with very specific cards. Yeah, she wants to keep very specific cards, and the intimidates just don't allow. Yeah, you to make it, those choices. It adds an extra level of chaos to a deck that really wants its its ducks in a row. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is just how the, the cookie crumbles, as it were. Um, I have never seen a Reinar quite pop off that hard <laughs> over the well, course of three turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. there are scarier turn ones, I think, that could happen. But yeah, I think Reinar's really good. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. You got, you got me. Good game, man. <laughs> good game, good game. Um, yeah, I think if you uh, want more uh, insight onto how that game was, uh, you should probably just watch it again. It won't take you very long. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway, that will do it for this, the third episode of the Goliath Gauntlet. We have the finals uh, coming up next week, which uh, do you want to give them a, a sneak preview of who you're going to play? Yeah, so... Uh... I'm going to run Lexi into Bill's Azalea. I am not a very good archer player, so this one <laughs> should be interesting. Um, yes, and I think I'm probably going to get, uh, I'm going to make Red Zone Rogue angry, I think, because I'm taking his no fuse Lexi build and I'm going to play it entirely wrong. <laughs> And I'm going to make some very questionable changes to the deck with new cards. Well, I'm sure that he'll just be excited to see the deck in action. Um, it, and it is what it is. But um, yeah, thank you once again for, for joining us for yet another episode. Uh, thank you at home for watching. And uh, stay well, stay safe, and we will catch you all next week in the next episode. Hey, thanks for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. Before you close the window, make sure you click subscribe for more great flesh and blood content.